we are going to talk about protein sorting. Most proteins start their synthesis in the cytoplasm. However, they end up in various cellular compartments or organelles. I'm going to take liberty and draw some analogies. Let's consider proteins tools. Proteins perform different functions for the cell. And let's consider the compartments different shops or different rooms. So we have a compartment or a room in which there is which has been designated as carpenter's shop. We have another room which has been designated as welder's shop. We have another room which has been designated as a mason's shop or mason's room. So if carpenter's tools end up in the welder's room or vice versa, that will be a complete waste because the tools the carpenter needs to use have to be in carpenter's room in order to be useful. So how do cells know where, which protein to send and how this whole system works? This is what we will be talking about in this series of, uh, this series of lectures. So let's start. So cytoplasm is a laboratory subdivided into functionally distinct membrane enclosed compartments, which we call organelles. Almost all organelles are membrane enclosed. There are exceptions, for example, ribosomes, they don't have a membrane. Organelles is basically a structurally and functionally distinct part of the cell. Almost all eukaryotic cells have membrane enclosed organelles. Each organelle contains its own characteristic set of enzymes and other specialized molecules. Proteins, basically, as I was saying, that proteins are basically tools. So consequently, proteins confer upon each compartment its characteristic structural and functional properties, which makes sense because proteins basically perform most of the functions in the cell. Now, in order to understand how proteins are distributed to organelles, let's also look at how organelles evolved. We have already talked about how mitochondria and chloroplast evolved. Uh, let's also look at what is the theory about evolution of nuclear membrane, for example. So in ancient prokaryotic cell, for example, we know that uh, prokaryotes or bacterial cells, they don't have any membrane enclosed organelles. So if we are looking at the evolution, let's start with an ancient prokaryotic cell which did not have any membrane enclosed organelles and of course which includes the nuclear membrane, defined nucleus which is enclosed in a nuclear membrane. So at some point there were invaginations in the plasma membrane which caused the membrane in fold to circle around the genetic material, the DNA and there was, it gave rise to a network of membranes inside the cell which not only resulted in nuclear membrane, but also the membrane system we talked about earlier, the endoplasmic reticulum and also the Golgi apparatus. This is, people think, how these organelles, membrane-bound organelles evolved. The other set of organelles, we have talked about them, is, for example, mitochondria and chloroplast. It is thought that these organelles resulted in a process of endosymbiosis where a larger cell engulfed a smaller cell and the smaller cell which was initially enclosed in the phagosome was not digested and this cell gave special properties to the larger cell and in case of mitochondria it was ability for the larger cell to process or neutralize atmospheric oxygen which was rising uh, the concentration of oxygen was rising back then and oxygen has toxic effects too. So this is basically, we have talked some, about some of these things uh, in previous module, but I just wanted to refresh your memory. So now let's move on and talk about, look at another aspect. We have said that cells cannot be very large and the reason is surface area to volume ratio. Now bacterial cells, have a volume about 1,000 to 10,000 times 
smaller than eukaryotic cell. So how come we don't have any large bacteria but they are larger eukaryotic cells? The reason is, one of the reasons is that eukaryotic cells have membranes that allow these membranous organelles that increase the surface area several folds which allows these larger cells to process different reactions which allow these cells to sustain a larger size. So we are talking about protein sorting. So basically we first of all talked about the, the necessity and we also talked about how these membrane enclosed organelles evolved. Then we also saw that what advantage did these membrane enclosed organelles gave to the larger cells, eukaryotic cells. Now we want to understand how this molecules move between them and how these compartments are maintained. An animal cell contains about 10 billion protein molecules, about 10,000 to 20,000 different types of these protein molecules are present inside a eukaryotic cell. As you know, each newly synthesized protein is delivered specifically to compartment that requires it. However, there is a challenge. We know that the lipid bilayer is hydrophobic and polar molecules cannot cross the lipid bilayer on their own. So there have to be systems evolved which will deliver, which allow, which will allow these molecules these protein molecules to enter a specific organelle. We will talk about those, some of those techniques and some of those uh, mechanisms how these molecules can go through the lipid bilayer. So here again, I would just like to show you an overview, uh, anatomy of a cell. Here we have uh, a eukaryotic cell, nucleus enclosed by a double membrane. We have the endoplasmic reticulum. We have the Golgi apparatus and we have mitochondria and other organelles, peroxisomes, perhaps lysosomes, etc., so on and so forth. They're all membrane enclosed organelles in a eukaryotic cell. Membrane of each organelle contains membrane transport proteins that are responsible for import and export of specific metabolites. Each organelle membrane as a mechanism for importing and incorporating specific proteins that makes the organelle unique. All protein synthesis initiates in cytosol. There is an exception. We know that there are ribosomes and mitochondria and chloroplast that can also perform protein synthesis, but that is a little exception. And we know where did those ribosomes come from. The subsequent fate of these proteins depends upon the amino acid sequence which also contains sorting sequence or sorting signals that direct their delivery to locations outside the cytosol. No sorting signal on a protein means that that protein is going to be a permanent resident of the cytosol. So all proteins basically when proteins are made they have little labels which are read by cellular machinery, those labels are basically addresses which tell where this protein has to go. Here's also two different mechanisms that we will talk about in more detail, but I basically wanted to show you an overview of this. Here the protein is being made. This is a messenger RNA. It is making a protein. Uh, it is being translated into a protein. If this protein has a specific sequence, in the form of sequence of amino acids and it specifies its address uh, for example in this case go to ER the protein will be injected in the lumen of ER if there is no address on a protein it can be a mature cytosolic protein or the protein can fold and then it can be also exported into the nucleus or if this protein has a specific a different type of address it will be either delivered to mitochondria or chloroplast, for example, or it can go to peroxisome. However, in these cases, the protein is after it has been made, it will again straighten out and it will just snake through these organelles. So I basically wanted you to familiarize that these three different modes of transport of proteins into different organelles.
So here we have talked about some basic information about protein sorting. We will continue our discussion of protein sorting in the eukaryotic cell in the subsequent module.